do start with the pictures that are absolutely terrifying. The heart-stopping moment when a four-year-old boy tumbles into a zoo's gorilla enclosure and comes face-to-face -face with a 400-pound silverback. As hard as this is to watch, especially for parents, we want to emphasize that this boy survived. He is in the hospital this morning. He's in serious condition. The gorilla, however, did not survive. The zookeeper shot him. A controversial call they are defending this morning, and we have to warn you, much of the imagery you're about to see may be disturbing. Having said that, here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez at the zoo in Cincinnati with much more. Marcy, good morning to you. Guys, good morning. What a horrifying scene. People here watching and screaming for help as that boy spent 10 long minutes trapped in that enclosure. <laughs> This morning, new video obtained by ABC News capturing a toddler screams the moment he comes face to face with a giant gorilla. The child has fallen into the gorilla cage. Zoo officials say the four-year-old, now recovering at a hospital, crawled into the Gorilla World exhibit. Onlookers terrified, the boy's mother calling to him as the gorilla crouches over the boy. Mommy's right here. Then the 400-pound primate races away, dragging the child through the moat. We knew he was being dragged by the gorilla. And then the gorilla took him to one end of the habitat, and then the little boy started screaming. The gorilla, a 17-year-old silverback named Harambe, shot and killed by zookeepers to rescue the boy. The decision was not made lightly. Lowland gorillas are very endangered animals. There aren't very many in captivity but it has the, the proper ending. This morning, officials are looking into just how the little boy made it into the enclosure, somehow getting under a railing through wires and bushes, falling more than 10 feet. We have rescued the child. Now the zoo mourning Harambe's death along with critics, many who question the use of lethal force over a tranquilizer. The park officials say the encounter could have been much worse. They made a tough choice and they made the right choice because they saved that little boy's life. It could have been very bad. And incredibly, we're told the boy was conscious when he left here for the hospital. A spokesperson there tells us his injuries are serious, but not life threatening. And the zoo will be back open today, but the gorilla exhibit will be closed as officials here investigate. Dan. Marcy, thank you. So happy to hear the boy, uh, his injuries not life threatening. And just moments ago, I spoke about all of this with the animal trainer Dave Salmoni, who joined us from Toronto. Dave, thanks for joining us. Uh, knowing what you know uh, about gorillas, how much danger was that little boy in? I, I would say it's easy to suggest this is life threatening danger. Uh, in a captive environment, you never know exactly how. Uh, an animal's going to react to something like this, and typically a silverback gorilla can either be nervous of something like this, something new, like a child entering the enclosure, or react aggressively. And it's the aggressive reaction that you really do have to worry about. So, so do you agree that zoo officials made the right choice by killing the gorilla? Some, some are arguing that they simply should have tranquilized the animal. You know, I certainly wouldn't second guess them not being there. Uh, in almost every case, there's a protocol put up where there is an animal person who will be watching the situation where they would have, they would have a, a, a lethal action on the right hand and, and non-lethal tranquilizing on the left hand, and they will be able to make that call. Well, what is this kind of moment like for somebody who works at a zoo? I would have to imagine this is the, the, the worst nightmare. Yeah, absolutely the perfect description, worst nightmare, because these are the types of things you train for all the times, and these guys absolutely were trained for that, but you hope to never be put in this situation because you obviously care about the life of the human being, but you, you care about the gorilla's life almost as much, if not as much. It's, a, it's an emotionally uh, freighted moment, I'm sure. The, the, the fact that this boy was able to get into that enclosure, though, what does this say about the safety of zoos where we all take our kids? You know, I think uh, there is some responsibility to the zoo goer that says you have to abide by our barriers. You can only put up fences. You can only, you know, do so much to keep someone safe. And then that person has to also take some responsibility for their own safety. And you said a moment ago something that is indisputably true, that this was not the gorilla's fault. And, and some animal, uh, animal advocates are going to see this video and, and see this story and ask, should we even be keeping animals in zoos anymore? You know, it's a, it's a really tough question because absolutely in a perfect world, there would be no animals in zoos. And I think everyone agrees to that. I think the problem is we do have animals in captivity and those animals need to be cared for. Dave Salmoni, we really appreciate your analysis on this story. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Such a tough story to, to watch and for his parents to see that happen too. But thank, thank you, Dan.